Hello, and welcome to a new series of the Yesterday Show with your host, Thomas Wales. And we're kicking off our new series with a retrospective on film and TV in 2008. To aid me in this, I'm joined by the acclaimed Irish media critic, Dylan Morgan. Mr. Morgan, thank you for joining us. Thank you, it is a pleasure to be here in these surroundings. Now, I'd like to start with film, Mr. Morgan, if I may. I suppose no review of 2008 can go by without mentioning The Dark Knight, one of the films of the decade, wouldn't you say? Uh, yes, I would have to um, agree with that view, although um, for me the uh, best bit of the film was the uh, endless bloodshed and the killing and the explosions. Um, Heath Ledger's Joker is um, a fabulous performance, someone with whom the audience can sympathise. He is a, a model for modern villainy and an inspiration for criminals everywhere. That is the um, key, I think, in this film. It didn't paint criminals as being stupid or stereotyped like a lot of Guy Ritchie's um, recent work has done. Uh, instead it showed how criminals are, or at least can be, very clever and intelligent. And I think that's very good in this modern age to put criminals in a proper light. Okay. What other films have attracted your attention in 2008? Earlier this year we had the author Boleyn Girl, uh, starring Eric Banner, Natalie Portman and Scarlett Johansson. The plot, as far as I can make out, was um, uh, put these two wonderful buxom ladies in a pair of corsets and then have Eric Banner as an Australian Henry VIII fighting over their affections, trying to get them into bed. It was um, pretty good as a romp, but it wasn't... Uh, Henry VIII was not portrayed as ruthless enough for the historical interpretation to stand off. The only other um, one I'd care to mention is uh, Righteous Kill, the uh, much lauded and much hated vehicle which sees uh, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino sharing the screen for the first time since the 80s. And I find this disappointing. Pacino just isn't evil enough anymore. His uh, days of being the most evil actor on the screen with the Godfather trilogy are long gone. He looks terrible. He shouldn't be doing this sort of thing anymore. Not evil enough? No. Nowhere near evil enough. Okay. Moving on to TV, the big news at the end of the year was the announcement of David Tennant's retirement in the role of Doctor Who. Was this a wise decision, and what hopes do you hold for his replacement? I would say it was the right time to go, largely because I am not a fan of Tennant's interpretation. It's too zany, it's too off the wall, it's too goofy to pass muster as a proper Doctor Who. For instance, in the Christmas special, he was outclassed by Dervla Kerfin's villainess, and the point about Doctor Who is the Doctor, like his enemies, like Davros, like the Master, he has to be evil. He has to be sinister, he has to be edgy, he has to be dangerous, he has to be unpredictable. But above all, he has to be evil. That is why why Christopher Eccleston's interpretation was so absolutely perfect. Here you have a guy who is dangerous, who is unpredictable, who looks evil, and can be evil when he shouts. My only hope is when they come to write Matt Smith's character, Stephen Moffat, taking over from Russell T. Davis, they will give him a gun, they will give him the opportunity to do lots of evil laughs, they will make him look evil, and he will go around doing evil things, which is what Doctor Who is all about. Evil. Evil. We must just touch on radio and the scandal involving Jonathan Ross and Russell Brand last year. Where do you stand on this? I strongly believe the BBC were wrong to sack them. Uh, largely because uh, what uh, Messrs Brand and Ross did was actually comparatively lame and offensive. It might have been offensive to Mr Sachs, but that's beside the point. They are not being evil enough. Um, the fact that they only got 27,000 complaints, which is negligible. They should be allowed back, reinstated, so that they can do more stuff like that. Stuff which is entertaining and a little bit sinister and evil at the same time. Finally, what kinds of subjects would you like to see covered on film and TV in 2009? I would like to see some more films about the Iraq war, but from a different perspective, namely the perspective of the terrorists. We've seen this year a number of films like uh, Body of Lies which have focused on the good guys but it's always good to see the other side of the story, the kind of people who are painted as evil. I would also be interesting to see with the um, political changes happening in Zimbabwe at the moment um, if and when a biopic of Robert Mugabe would come out it would be interesting to see uh, and dispel uh, a number of myths about this uh, character whom, again, the West has vilified, but is actually not as bad as he seems. Okay, uh, Dylan Morgan. Mugabe not as bad as he seems. Right, thanks for that. And now it's time for our economics report. 
Following the disappearance of our international correspondent, Alex, we welcome this week a new member of the team. He's an intern, his name is Barry, and we've thrown him in at the deep end for his first report, sending him to 11 Downing Street to report on the economic situation. Barry, are you there? Yes, I am. Now, um, I appreciate that we've given you a difficult task to start with, and that Alex has been a hard act to follow, so just do the best you can. I will. Okay, now I understand you've met with the Chancellor today. Yes, Mr Darling, and had a long and entertaining conversation that lasted for about four hours. Four hours? Yes. So, what did you talk about? Well, first of all, we discussed the political fallout due to Russia's turning off of Ukraine's gas supply. He said that it was cold and hearted of the Russians to manipulate energy resources for political ends and applauded the efforts of those negotiating for beneficial solution to the crisis. He did not comment on Britain's position or whether our supplies would be adversely affected, but he did seem confident that a solution would be quickly arrived at which would suit all parties. Oh, right. Um, uh, what about the latest reports on growth from the Office of National Statistics? Did you talk about those? Uh, yes. I've got the statistics right here. According to the ONS, manufacturing output suffered a year-on-year -year decline of 7.4% and an average monthly decline of 2.9%. This is the ninth consecutive month of falling industrial output, and economists at ING are forecasting that, as a result, the British economy would shrink by up to 3% this year, up from 0.6% between July and September last year, and 1.5% across the financial year. Sadly, Barry, we must move on. We're short of time. Uh, I just want to talk about some of the other firms that have been in trouble this week. Has there been any more talk of bailouts or mergers that we need to know about? Well, this week has been eventful, seeing the green light given to the merger between Lloyds and HBOS. The deal is worth £12.2 billion and is predicted to lead over to 4,000 job losses. This is important since the Treasury's stake in the new superbank amounts to 43.4%, which Mr Darling described as a golden opportunity to demonstrate the government's economic credentials and commitment to the British public. Ah, but did he say... Elsewhere, there have been no real reports of bailouts. Nissan have announced 1,200 job losses at their Sunderland plant. There continues to be production problems with BMW's Cannelly plant, home of the Mini, of course, and Wedgwood are in talks with an American firm in a bid to keep out the administrators. Mr Darling said that. Oh, right, Barry, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, we're out of time. Barry there reporting from 11 Downing Street after a chat with his new best friend from the lots of things. God, I almost wish Alex was back. And now back to... Excuse me. Hello? What? Who is this? Is this a joke? You're kidding. Whereabouts are you? I see. I know, I know. He's dreadful. We can't have him on again. Well, if he's like this next week, you can gladly come back. Right, well, see you then. Well, uh, that's a turn up for the books. Uh, join us again for a more stimulating analysis and excellent reporting with another new member. But for now, back to mumbling on. <laughs>